Ahoy there! Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. This video is sponsored by NetEase, and if you're concerned about what that means in terms of trustworthiness and ethics of my content, then please check out the press release I've put in my Discord. It's linked down below if you want to check that out. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what to spend money on in Infinite Lagrange, and by money, I mean real money. We're talking about microtransactions today, and this is always a controversial topic. However, I will say now that even free-to-play games still need to make money, developers still need to be paid, server costs need to be maintained, if you ever want new content to be added to the game, you're going to have to pay developers in order to produce that content. In a worst case scenario, if a game is not profitable, the servers are going to be shut down and just the game will cease to exist. Uh, go, a sad fact of life, you are going to have to make sure that a game is profitable. Asking for money for your game is not inherently evil. Some of the practices that certain companies use in order to get money for their games, yes, I agree, but I also personally believe Infinite Lagrange stays shy of all of those pitholes pretty much without fail. I'm very pleased with how the monetization here works, and yes, that is my genuine opinion. Check the press release. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel, make sure to ding that notification bell, and to set it to all notifications so that you never miss an upload. If you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, I do have a Patreon and a Redbubble merchandise store that you can check out. Both are linked in the description down below. Um, and if you want to comment, I know this is a controversial topic. As I said, if you've got thoughts and opinions, please leave them in the comment section below, but keep it civil. I don't want to have to remove comments or to, you know, mute people for being hostile and rude to each other. That's not what I'm here to do. Anyway, today's video then, what are the best things to spend money on in Infinite Lagrange? First of all, we need to talk about the concept of game. What I'm saying here is that the best thing to have in the game is more ships, right? And in order to do that, you're going to need to have blueprints, and you find these mainly in black market tech files. Every day, one of these black market tech files is available for 150 Proxima coins, after which they cost 300 each. There's also a second version here for 888. What I like to do each day is to log in, grab that 50% off 150 Proxima blueprint crate, and then the two generic blueprint files that can be bought using UE coins. But Obviously, that is not sustainable if you're just logging in and you don't have any Proxima coin. You're going to get Proxima coin as part of each week's weekly maintenance, but that's not going to be enough to get a black market tech file file every day. So how do you actually do this? This is where what I think is the best purchase in the entirety of Infinite Lagrange comes in. That is the Dawn funding scheme. Now, the Dawn funding scheme is essentially a battle pass. You can see there are lots of different levels, and each level of the battle pass will award everything from UE coins to the black market tech file crates to more Proxima. There's a free track along the top, which is absolutely jam-packed with goodies, and there is a paid track along the bottom. Now, you'll see that ultimately how this works is every time you do anything in the game, you earn activeness. Logging in every day earns you 20 activeness. Using any action points earns you 10 activeness per action point spent, and you obtain one activeness for each enemy ship destroyed. Destroy 10 enemy ships, get 10 activeness. Basically, you'll see that the first level up here, I'm 20 out of 400, 20 because I logged in today and I've got that 20 at the top, 400 is the amount required to reach the next level. With that 10 activeness for every action point used, if I spend 40 action points, I will level up. I actually only need to spend 38 action points, thanks to that 20 for the leveling. But basically, that's a nice easy way to start getting all of this stuff. And how do you do this? Well, if you sign the strategic partnership agreement here, which is £15 in British money, um, you're going to get, in addition to accessing the bottom line with all of the unique goodies on it when you reach those points, you're also going to immediately get... 980 Chew Coin, which is the premium currency in the game. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, this alone, in my opinion, is pretty worth it. There's a lot of black market tech files along the bottom here, a lot of additional Proxima that you're going to be able to use to buy more black market tech files, and um, so on and so forth. This alone is going to keep you opening black market tech files nigh on constantly. And every time you earn the Proxima coin, you hold onto those and you use them to buy those daily 150 Proxima black market tech file crates. That's pretty cool in itself. But remember that we have a 980 chew coin added to this. 
Now I say remember this because you can actually change Chewcoin directly into Proxmo, and this is, in my opinion, the only real use for Chewcoin. We'll talk about the other uses later on, but for the most part, just be aware that you can one for one change Chewcoin into Proxmo. Now, when you start on a new server, at the top left here, you've got this clipboard with a tick on it. If we tap that, it brings us to the event menu, and the bottom one of these is a tech support from Jupiter Industries. This is 99 pence, less than a pound. This will then earn you 80 Chew Coins, 1,500 uh, 1, UE Coins, and 10 Speed Up. Now, the 10 speed up and the 1500 yeah, UE coin are pretty much pointless. I don't give a darn about those. The Eris blueprint itself, though, is awesome, which is also included, and this is what this bit here is on the end. The Eris itself is a light, rapid-fire cannon destroyer, and I think it's one of the best destroyers early on in the game. It is exceptional at taking out enemy frigates and destroyers, and it also is surprisingly tanky. Also, once you've unlocked the Eris Blueprint, the standard light rapid fire cannon destroyer, which is the first variant, when you find the Eris again in other blueprint boxes, because the Eris does exist in other blueprint boxes, you can unlock the armor variant. And that armor variant is really, really good. It's one of the best tanking destroyers in the game, in my opinion. Getting that was a game changer for my destroyer and frigate fleet. There's also the Eris heavy cannon destroyer. And my goodness, the statistics on that thing are terrifying. So the Eris, in my opinion, is well worth getting. Even if you don't use the destroyer itself in the long term, the fact is that you are now already a significant step closer to having the armor and the heavy cannon variant. Although, again, I do think the rapid fire variant is well worth it. The key point, though, is that buying this as well will give you an additional 60 chew coin. Now, in my opinion, that is one of the best purchases anyway. Just a pound to get yourself the Eris is pretty cool. But if you combine those two purchases, sorry, into the Dawn funding scheme, not only have you got the 980 here from the Strategic Partnership Agreement, you've also got the 60 from buying the Eris. That is more than the 1,000 you'll need for the Dawn financial plan. Now, unfortunately, I've already activated this in a previous take where um, things didn't work out quite fairly. So basically, you'll have to see this on your own screen. There are two versions of the Dawn financial plan. And if you can get yourself a thousand Proxima, the one on the right is by far the superior one. Basically, you spend 1,000 Proxima immediately, and it will give you this tracker. You'll get 100 straight away back, and then every day that you log in for the next 30 days, you gain a certain amount of Proxima back. So this means when I log in tomorrow, I will get another 100 Proxima. When I log in the day after tomorrow, I'll get a further 100 Proxima. This means that over the course of those 30 days, the 1,000 Proxima that you spent is converted into 3,200 Proxima, a profit of 2,200. That is awesome, and it is a really, really big help. This essentially, combined with everything else, now means that every day you log in, that Dawn funding scheme is going to earn you a whole ton of black market tech crates, you're going to be earning Proxima coin through the Dawn funding scheme, every day you log in you're going to be getting at least 100 Proxima towards buying more of the black market crates, it's just a way to constantly keep the Proxima flowing so that every day you can log in, buy one of those 150 Proxima black market tech files and your two generic BP files. Every day, that's what I do first thing in the morning. Log in, grab the black market tech file and two of the generic BP files. That's my daily routine and it has helped me unlock so many ships that it is unbelievable. So, you could theoretically just go in and buy enough Proxima to do the Dawn financial plan, and that's kind of worth it. The thing is, though, when you look at how much that costs in Chewcoin, that's going to cost you either your first purchase here of 9.99, so £10, um, to get you the 680 plus your first purchase of 680 being a total of 1360, giving you enough to you know to buy that straight off. If it's not your first purchase, though, you're going to have to do a $9.99 and a $4.99 in order to actually reach the amount required. In fact, even that's not quite enough. Why not just go for the Battle Pass and get all the other stuff as well? So in my opinion, the best thing to buy is the Strategic Partnership Agreement, followed by the Eris. That gives you enough to go into the Dawn Financial Plan. You've got all three of those things for a total of £16. Now, again, you can avoid the Eris if you really sit there and think, oh, I don't want an Eris, although I really don't get why. You can just level up the Dawn Partnership Agreement here to level 3, where you get the 100 Proxima there. That will then be sufficient to open the Dawn Financial Plan. I personally recommend, though, just spending that extra pound to get the Eris. £16 unlocks an insane 
amount of content here in Infinite Lagrange, and basically after doing that, I don't tend to buy anything else because in my opinion, there's not much other point. Let's have a look at what the other options are though, just so you're aware. So first of all, let's jump back into the recharge screen. You'll notice that every day that you buy here, you will gain whatever you purchase plus an additional 60 Proxima coin. It's not much, but it's a nice little gift. Now, I'm part of Google Play Rewards, which means every week I earn a certain amount of Google, point, uh, Google Play points. Once I've got enough of those, I can convert them into Google Play credit. That means if I do that, I can convert it into a pound's worth of Google Play credit. I can buy that first one, uh, 99 pence one, 60 coins there. Um, completely free basically. That would give me 60 coins basic because it would be my first purchase. I'm going to get an additional 60 coins, so that's a, to a total of 120. Then I'm also going to get the 60 Proxima as it's the first purchase of the day, which is 180 Proxima in effect by the time you've turned the Chew Coin into the Proxima. And yes, elephant in the room, there is one of these that is 99.99. In my opinion, that is a lot of money to drop in one go. I've probably dropped about that much over the course of me playing Infinite Lagrange. I just don't feel I can drop it in one go. If you're the kind of person, however, that does have that kind of disposable income or just really wants to invest in the game early on, it's nice that it's an option. I don't think it's inherently evil that it's an option. You don't have to go for it. There's so many other things you can do. In my opinion, £16 is literally all you need. Anyway, other things you can actually spend money on. If we come to the store and go to Tech Center, you get tech points for frigates, tech points for destroyers, and tech points for cruisers. Now, blueprints go all the way up to level 50, and those final few levels, anything from level 30 upwards, yeah, can be a bit of a grind because you don't gain experience from uh, like fighting off privateers or like cities. You only get experience at that point from PvP taking out other players. So other than strategically fighting other players in order to level up, you, you kind of have to wait until you get tech points drop in your crates, your black market tech crates, for example. Or you can theoretically spend real money here buying tech points directly. Just, in my opinion, this isn't really worth it. This is not a great way to spend your money. If you, again, you've got disposable income and you want to do it, you know, be my guest. But you're watching this video because you want to know what I think is worth it and what's not such good value. This to me is lower value. You can buy each of them only once. So once you've spent £9 on the tech points for destroyers, you can't do it again. You can't spend £18 and get 20 points. You cannot do that. It's only the 10 points. I just don't personally see that as worth it. It's, you know, in my opinion, I think that there are ways to level up your destroyers, frigates and cruisers that don't require the money. And you don't lose all that much. 10 tech points on a destroyer, cruiser or frigate doesn't actually do all that much. It's a complete upgrade on basically one system, if that. Um, so it's not a huge investment, but it's still not as bad as by far the worst way you can spend money in this game, in my opinion. If we go into blueprints and look under ship liveries, you can here buy different liveries for different ships. And some of these do look really cool. I'm not going to lie. I really like the look of some of these. Um, basically, they're skins for your ship and they cost 1200 chew coin. 1200 chew coin in basic terms is about £20. If you want to buy this and not get the additional first purchase bonus, etc., it's £20. Now, yes, okay, theoretically you could go in and buy it cheaper using the first purchase bonuses, but for the most part, overall, it's £20 for one of these skins. When you buy the skin, it can be applied to any ship, but it can only be applied to one hull type. That means if you've got a fleet that is, for example, Reliats, FG300s, Winged Hussars, Eris, and let's go with Casso uh, 66 Cruiser. That's five different ships in that fleet. If you want all of those ships to have Mars Anger, you need to buy the Mars Anger skin five times. Once for the Reliat, once for the Winged Hussar, once that you get the idea. That means that £20 has now cost you £100 to get the entire fleet in Mars's Anger. And you only see those if you zoom in on a fleet in combat. Your opponents only see that when they're being attacked if they zoom in on their fleet in combat as well. So in my opinion, this is by far the worst value for money. It's a skin that you very rarely ever see, and it is astonishingly expensive. So, honestly... I'm, I like skins. I like skins on ships, but I'm never going to spend £20 on a skin for one ship only that no one's ever really going to see. I think that there are much better ways to spend money in this game. Um, 
That said, I also don't believe that just because I wouldn't spend £20 on it that they should reduce the price. I mean, I'd love it to be like £2 per skin. Um, I would probably buy it at that point, but it's not good value for NetEase. The entire point here is that it is a ridiculously niche thing that certain people who have a lot of disposable income will go for. For the rest of us, do you really care that skins are expensive and you're never going to see them? Because I don't actually look at my ships all that often, and I think that the basic designs are still pretty sweet. So that's my thoughts and opinions at least. I would love to hear yours again civilly in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think the best purchase to make an infinite Lagrange is. I want to say now again, I do not believe that purchases are at all necessary in this game. I know plenty of folk who have completed their first server without making any purchases whatsoever, just using the daily login rewards um, and weekly maintenance rewards and things like that just that that's how they've got their blueprints they've still got some pretty good blueprints they still turn to call, uh, turn up to call to arms against cities they still participate in pvp and things like that there's no huge disadvantage to not paying you just get a really nice step up if you're willing to pay and from in my opinion if you have the capability of paying 16 pound or whatever that works out to in your standard currency for the dawn financial plan and the Eris Blueprint, that is enough to really kick off your time in Infinite Lagrange. That one payment, well, those two payments, that one little block there is going to keep you sailing for a long, long time. Everything else, as far as I'm concerned, not really worth it. But that, yeah, wholeheartedly. But let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Tell me how dead wrong I am and how evil I am for suggesting that a video game might actually require money in order to keep going. I've heard it all before. Seriously, try me. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way to the end. Happy sailing and see you in Infinite Lagrange.